What's up everyone, Thralls Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Nick and I have yet another album review near the end of the year. So yet another one that came out on the 10th of December was the long-awaited sophomore release from Denmark's Frontalith. Chimera. This comes out on Nuclear Winter Records. This band formed in 2013 in Denmark. Again, this is their second full-length album, though they have plenty of EPs and demos. This band also features members of Sulphurus, Hyperdontia, and Undergang in here too. So a lot of cool like death metal pedigree along the way. Now, I'll be honest, I could have sworn I saw this album teased coming out earlier this year, like all the way back in like February or March, but for some odd reason, this got pushed back all the way until the end of this year, but I'm just glad it's here because I was a huge fan of their first album, Desolate Enscape. I think that album is flat out amazing, which is why I'm jamming it behind me. And this album is actually kind of different from that one. I think this album kind of tweaked with the formula a little bit, added some things, maybe subtracted a few things. And overall, I think they made this maybe just a little bit different than Desolate Endscape in terms of like trying not to repeat what they did in the first album. This is definitely a different album. The opening track, Awakening Titans, begins with really cool synthy atmosphere. And when it gets into the song itself, the production is definitely different than Desolate Endscape. This feels a bit colder, almost a bit blackened, honestly. Lots of tremolo riffs with really clever harmonies and possibly more of a lean towards like dissonant melodies versus sort of the outright brutality that was on Desolate Endscape. Don't worry, those brutal elements are still here, especially on songs like Gorgon Head and Chimeran Offering Part Two. There's two parts. Those songs show off their more brutal side, more along the lines of Morbid Angel and Incantation in terms of that deep, dark, swampy death metal, but also adding blackened atmosphere along the tremolo harmonies, which is kind of cool. It's a different wrinkle in this album, and it kind of makes for a different listen. Actually, I would even go as far to say as looking at the album art, the album art kind of matches the sound on here. It's a little bit colder. It's a little bit more dark and sinister versus sort of just brutal and in your face. Vocally, this is also quite a bit different too. There's more high screams on here, but there's also those very low undergang-ish vocals on there that just sound like a frog throwing up into a microphone, which honestly, I've grown to really like that. It's kind of a cool novelty just to see how low they can go. But honestly, it's kind of cool to hear them like switch on and off between the two vocal styles because they could not be any more different but it's when they blend them together that it sounds just, I don't know, like Satan with laryngitis. It's actually quite effective. And again, it kind of adds the more sinister vibe on this. This is kind of a dark and brooding album. Now the melodies are very interesting on here. When it comes down to like a lot of the lead melodies, I think it's definitely more along the lines of those like ugly dissonant ones. You get some prettier leads in here every now and then, but for the most part, they just sound tortured and anguished and generally in the background you'll hear like a, a desperate howl in the background because again this is definitely more about the atmosphere and sort of making it again very creepy and unsettling and they do a really good job on here. But one that stood out just in terms of a particular hook was the song Phlegathon. I think I said that right. Pretty sure it's like the name of Cthulhu's nephew or something. Either way they bring in some very cool like atmospheric melodies on there that are actually like just sort of tuneful, like they're not creepy and dissonant. They actually kind of remind me a bit of the most recent Rivers and Isle, albeit mixed with like some really ugly death metal. And I'm talking about a very like almost Finnish death metal style, like definitely bits of early amorphous, early sentence, and more recent bands like Gorphelia sort of mixed in there. And an interesting thing about Phlegathon is it's actually mostly instrumental. There are some like groans in the background, but they're mostly just there for like added atmosphere. A lot of it, they're just kind of letting the riffs do the talking and it's a really cool like song build. It sort of builds tension along the way. One of the things I really liked on here, at least in the first two tracks, was the fact that they like to bookend melodies. The opening hook on Awakening the Titans and Chimerian Offering Part 1, because there's two, they open up with a solid lead-in, like a big hook, go through a lot of cool dynamics, like the song sort of shift around, keeping it very riff-based and very atmosphere-based, and then coming back into the main hook in the beginning just to remind you why you got into it from the first few seconds. Now I have to say both of the offerings were probably my favorite tracks in this album, and they're both very different. I think the first one is definitely more like 
thrashy. There's definitely some more sections on there that kind of scream like thrashy, almost blackened thrash moments on there. And it has like a different energy. It's very bombastic. And then the last track, the second offering, is my favorite song on the album. That song explores a lot of cool dynamics, but the main thing I like about it is it kind of sticks to one main melody, but lots of variations of it. They'll change around like the uh, timing of it or just add a harmony on top of it. But for the most part, it kind of has this very samey sort of anchor melody and they build upon it and sort of layer it and you know throw in a couple of different change ups in there. But the fact that it is anchored around one particularly good hook kept me latched on the song the entire time and it's over seven minutes. So if you can do that for over seven minutes and keep it interesting and also keep it very, again, dark, but also brutal sort of walking that line between those two different sort of camps there, you done a good job. Now, this album does have a couple of drawbacks on it though. The song Kikidos, K-Y-K-Y-T-O-S, not sure how that's pronounced, but that's how my brain pronounces it. This song kind of feels like half of an idea. Starts off well with some really cool black and tremolo riffs, a really nasty death doom section comes in, and then it just stops. I feel like right when it was really getting interesting and about to shift into another cool dynamic, it just kind of quits. I feel like that was an incomplete song at least. And then that goes into the instrumental on here, Shimura, which is Chimera, it's actually spelled in the Greek alphabet, which was confusing. I had to look that up. But this original Chimera or Chimera is not nearly as cool as her offspring on this. This is just a very nice acoustic interlude. I don't really have any complaints about it musically, but the fact that it's a separate track that pretty much could have been put right at the beginning of Chimera and Offering Part 2 and possibly made that song even more epic because I love how that song just keeps building. Have it being a separate track just makes it an interlude. And yeah, pretty sure everyone knows how I feel about interludes. If this was actually part of Cameron Offering Part 2, I would have no issue with the whatever. I would still have issue with the fact that Kikidos just disappeared right when it was really getting interesting. But the fact that Chimera or Chimera is actually just a separate track when even the synths that sort of like kind of sweep in at the end of it really just segue right into Chimera and Offering Part 2, it doesn't feel like it needs to be a second track. It's just sort of an odd choice, but it really doesn't hamper this album very much because this album is really good. I think I like Desolate Anscape more just because that one sort of embodied everything I like about death metal. This is almost blackened death metal. The atmosphere feels, again, a lot colder, feels a lot darker and more sinister and maybe less brutal. It still has the brutal elements, but this is definitely them expanding their sound a bit and maybe sacrificing some aspects of their sound so they can squeeze in new aspects. But overall, they're doing them pretty well. So overall, I'm gonna give this four stars. This is a pretty damn good follow-up. Again, I like the debut a bit more, but that is not to say that this isn't good. This definitely showcases they have more in their wheelhouse in terms of directions they could possibly go. The more blackened elements on here definitely add a whole new dimension to their sound, and I'm curious to see how they incorporate them on the next release in terms of maybe bringing in a little bit of that earlier brutality and sort of mingling a little bit better. The album flows really well does have some minor issues towards the end, but the last track is, I think, the big payoff on here. And honestly, the gripes are minor because, again, Kikidos, I thought was really good. I wanted to continue. So having it end too soon, and that being a complaint, that just means I wanted more. And for an interlude, I didn't think Shimera was that bad. I just feel like it should have been part of, you know, the last track to make that one even more epic. So overall, this is a banging album. If you love the first one, this one is a bit different, but it still sounds like Friendlith, and I think that is the most important part. So I definitely urge you guys to jam this one, go get a copy of it. I'm gonna have to wait until it comes to a distro here because shipping prices are a little up there right now, but I will definitely eventually get this one because this album's solid. So if you enjoyed this review, give it a thumbs up, and if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon. If you would like to help us out, there will be a link down below. We also still have t-shirts available. If you would like one, hit us up on thrallsofmetal at gmail.com. 
send us a message, put shirts in it, and we will get back to you and hopefully sell you a shirt. Only got one more album I'm gonna review, and then we are done doing reviews for the year. January, we'll see what comes out. January is usually a slow month, so we're gonna to try to throw in some other different stuff in there. I just wanna say thank you guys again for making this another epic year. This has been an unreal amount of fun, and you guys are the main reason. Without you guys, well, we might still do this, but it would not be as much fun. That's for damn sure. Because we love talking to you guys. We love doing the premieres. We love all that shit, the live streams. All this is fun because of you. So thank you so damn much. And we will catch you later.